this is the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Wealth is a state of mind. When you hear that word, so when you think about it, what does that mean to you? I mean, my guess is, is that there's probably a dollar amount attached to it in some way, shape, or form. So it could be material things like houses, cars, boats, designer clothes, even emergency funds, whatever it is. But here's the thing that's interesting. There's been a lot of studies about wealth and the wealthy. And what is the mindset around people who are wealthy and successful? And people mostly who create their own wealth from the ground up is what makes people have that wealthy mindset. And it's commonly found that wealth is actually a state of mind. So it's how you think and how you look at your circumstances and situations. You know, many people are rich in the eyes of society, but they're not wealthy. And if you know, they lost it all tomorrow, odds are they would never get it back. However, truly wealthy people can lose money and they may even have to start over, but they can build it again. It's all about perspective. And it sounds easy, yet many of us tell ourselves it's too late. We can't change our careers. We can't find love. We don't have enough time to learn something new, to have that abundance mindset. But living with these limiting beliefs you know, that creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe you can't, guess what? You won't. And if you instead lived in terms of I can and I will, imagine what you can achieve. Your thoughts have incredible power over your everyday life and that your moods and behaviors are a reflection of how you think and attract that wealth in your life. So you're probably thinking like, why am I talking about wealth and money on a love show? Because it How can you apply this concept and have a wealthy in mindset when it comes to love? How can you be successful in love if you think of it this way? So I worked with a client who felt that she was a failure in her love life. She actually used those words. I'm a failure. And at 42 years old, she never had a boyfriend. She hardly got responses from men online, despite her many efforts. She was trying all these different sites, nowhere. And then she never even got past date three once she did get a date. And she admitted that she was really shy and never met men when she was out and about or socially. And flirting was just painful for her. And completely, she was just at a loss of what to do. Moreover, when she did talk with men, they never asked her out, nor would they even want a relationship with her or would just go straight to sex. And at some point, she just kind of gave up and she ascribed to the limiting belief that she did not have the wealth or success when it came to dating and relationships. Now, what's interesting about her is that she was super intelligent. She really excelled in school. She became extremely successful in her job. You might even say that she was wealthy. She was wealthy in a monetary sense. So that is where I started with her. I asked her, how did you become so successful in business? in that part of your life? And she answered simply, well, I just studied. I worked hard. And I responded with, well, what if you applied those same principles of achievement to dating? And she admitted, she's like, I never thought of that. So that's what I did. I put her through school, basically. (laughs) You know, I taught, I said, look, you're in kindergarten right now, and we're going to start from the fundamentals. You need to learn how to be wealthy in love. And the truth is that she just never learned how, given her upbringing and her cultural background. So it started with learning how to market herself and her clothes, body language, just even the picture she was putting up online. She had to learn feminine communication and how to flirt so that she could capture men's hearts and let them earn her. I taught her my social engagement formula, which you all know by now, so that she could come out of her shell and move conversations from her head to more connected ones. And after giving her the tools and experience of dating up a storm, she finally started seeing an abundance of men that she could finally choose from. And I'm happy to say, and this is obviously, it's about a year and a half later, she has a boyfriend and he loves her. He cherishes her. She never dreamed that she could get that. So what really happened? She changed her limiting belief of being a failure 
when she used to say, I can't, to being successful saying, I can. And today, I have a really special guest with me today. You're in for a treat. (laughs) And she really knows how to create a wealthy mindset like no one else, giving people a roadmap to success. I actually met her recently. Um, She was a fellow icon at the New Media Summit with Steve Ulsher, and we literally bonded instantly. So she is a wealthy life mentor, one of the America's premier experts on creating conscious change in living, a wealthy life by design, working with thousands of entrepreneurs throughout her 20 plus year career. She knows how to create proactive change that creates client breakthroughs in all areas of life. She is a connector and a catalyst for the creative age leader. She established an international reputation as, check this out, author of seven books. I can't even start my first one. I got to talk to you. A contributing author to another 15. As an online and offline speaker, she presented nearly six 600 times in eight years and shared both live and virtual stages with luminaries like John Asaraf, a star in the blockbuster movie, The Secret, and New York Times bestselling authors like Sark and Marianne Williamson. How cool is that? She is also the executive producer and host of Apple 200 top ranked men on purpose podcast listened to weekly in 85 countries and is excited about the launch of her new wickedly smart women podcast, which I'm going on. I can't wait to serve her sisters and success around the world. Welcome Emerald Green Forest. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I've got to update my bio. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, well, because we actually have launched Wickedly Smart Women and it is actually a, an Apple top 100 ranked podcast. Woo-hoo! It hit the top 100 within days and it took men on purpose uh, till last week to break through to the top 100. So, oh my gosh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I'm not surprised given like you're such a badass and all that you do. Oh, <laughs> so that's well, thank awesome. You. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. No, I was super excited to have you on. And I honestly, I mean, I, I spoke with you like a split second at the bar the last day of the summit, but mm-hmm. again, we like instantly connected, but I really, I don't really know your backstory at all. Like how you came to do all this and what prompted Mm. you to get into what you're doing. Yeah. Great question. So I'm going to tell a little story. So I love stories. Pull up, pull up a chair, get your cup of tea. (laughs) I'm going to clear my throat and here we go. It's summer 2004 and it's hot. I have had little to no income since early 2003 when I left behind my real estate career after a spiritual awakening. My last project was 51 single family houses, 56 apartments, and an office building. Mm. Newly divorced with a nine-year-old. I am just not seeing how I am going to make enough money to put shoes on his feet and pay the mortgage and stay committed to my calling. So that's a little bit of the backstory of what happened when I first got into this online world. Hmm. And on that summer day in 2004, I was standing in the backyard tears pouring down my face. The night before, I had made $105 teaching my very first healing course. (laughs) And when I got home, I discovered that my babysitter had put the popcorn in the microwave upside down. Oh, no. Burning a hole (gasps) right through the roof of it. On my answering machine... There was a message that I needed four new tires on my car. And the reason I'm standing in the backyard with tears pouring down my face and sweat all over me is because I've just run over a bolt with my lawnmower. Literally in 24 hours, I created $1,000 in unplanned expenses that I had no income in sight, no way to, um, no way to pay. So fast forward, 2016, I'm on a stage, I'm holding a mic, and I've made almost $2 million from home in my pajamas. 
Oh my gosh. And how I did that was I was able to tap in to what I now call the wealthy life method. And that has been the pieces of my puzzle that have allowed me to not only make $2 million myself from home in my pajamas while I was raising my son as a single mom, including go baking brownies, going yeah. to football games. Yeah. But also I have served clients around the world and my clients around the world have generated almost $46 million in income. So the wealthy life method is is my secret sauce. <laughs> That's amazing. Wait, wait. I, I, and we all inquiring minds do want to know this method, but I have a question. So yeah. before you move on to how, like, you know, what worked and what you teach yeah. when you were that woman back then yeah. with no money, burning popcorn in the oven, like all yeah. that stuff, like all the stuff, was all the stuff, like I can <laughs> smell it. Like you painted such a good picture. And, and honestly, I have such a, a similar story and most people who listen to my podcast know my story too, but I know for me, when I was in a, a, that similar state, what my mindset was when it came to money and love and, and wealth. But I wondered, do you remember how you felt about yourself in that state? And like, what shifted? Like, you know, like, was it something that just happened overnight? Or was the method this, the thing that kind of took you through that? Yeah. So um to give you a little bit more backstory, when yeah. I had my spiritual awakening, I had my spiritual awakening in 2001. And by the end of 2002, I was divorced and mm -hmm. had also decided to leave behind the real estate career. And I, because I knew I was going to die if I stayed another minute, like I could feel like I was going to die if I stayed another minute in that, in that circumstance. And um, the people who I was working with, my business partners were both bullies and one of them was sexually predatory as well. Mm. So um, I literally walked out a month after my a month and a half after my divorce was final in and took a, a flying leap. Now some of mm -hmm. us can take a leap, right? Yeah. Some of us can take a leap because we've we have put off for so long getting the help or acknowledging even like, so step one in my wealthy life method is wake up to what's not working. Mm, I know so many of us just sleep away. <laughs> yeah, Wake up yeah. and walk away from what's not working. Mm -hmm. And so that actually is the first thing that I did. I woke up and I walked away from what wasn't working. I didn't, however, have any clue about what would work. I really didn't have a clue about what would work. But wait a second. How did you have the motivation to wake up and walk away? Like that's, that's sometimes even just a challenge, you know, maybe like in your head, you know, you need to do it, but if you have a victim mentality or like a, you know, a scarcity mindset at that time, it's hard to motivate yourself. So like, do you know what worked for you or what you tell yeah, other people? So it's, I think for me, what happened was that I, um, I, you know, life brings you a variety of uh, ways to get you moving. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm not the first person that's coined this phrase. I think it might have come from Oprah or she might have quoted it from somebody else. But, you know, there's maybe the from you. <laughs> no, so I'm going to just say it comes from the infinite source, right? Okay, yeah. So first there's the whisper. And so the whisper mm. came for me in 1995 after I had my, my child. And I started to feel that sense of dissatisfaction. I was so far in victim mode and so far in scarcity mode, so deep in that yeah. like, I didn't know. You don't, it's literally like being a fish in water, right? You don't totally. know that you're in water. You just don't know. Um, and so after his birth, which was very traumatic, had a very traumatic birth, um, the, that was when the whisper started to come. Mm. And then you get the two by four, right? So the two by four, um, or the knock on the door, then you get the yeah. knock on the door. So first you get the whisper, then you get the knock on the door, then you get the two by four, then you get the Mack truck. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. So um, with, with my journey, the whisper came when my son was born. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I think we skipped right over the knock on the door and went straight for the two by four because when he was three, uh, he was sexually assaulted in daycare. Oh. While I was in the middle of building this multifamily project with these two guys. And I was working 12, 15 hours a day, six days a week. And at the same time, attempting to heal the family and heal my son and heal my husband at the time who completely fell apart because probably he had unresolved trauma of his own. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that, that was the, that was, that was a big two by four. Yeah. And then, uh, and then it became clear probably, well, so that was 99 by 2001, it became clear that the marriage was just not sustainable. And, and the, the key was a few things. First, I hurt myself on the mountain uh, skiing. I hurt myself on the mountain mm-hmm. skiing. And I ended up going to physical therapy. And then I said to my physical therapist, what is this yoga thing? <laughs> and so I got into a yoga class. Uh, in early 2001, spring of 2001. And by September of 2001, I, I, it was time to get divorced. It was just so clear. Like the clarity was just all over the place. And, and so I would say that having the, you know, the two by four, the Mack truck, you know, again and again, all of these things, uh, ultimately I had to create a new reality for myself. So I, I chose to get divorced And by the time I got divorced, it was a year later. And as soon as I got divorced and divested myself of that dynamic, of the relationship dynamic, um, then I could see and wake up to the other places in my life Mm -hmm. where I was running those same storylines, but with different people. And then it became clear I needed to leave behind the real estate industry and and what was interesting for me was I really truly had no idea what where I was going or what I was doing, um, other than I was called to heal. I was called to be a healer, and um, and that was a, co- a complete one eighty, like a total shock mm-hmm. and complete one eighty. Well, me. you know what I love about what you're saying too is it sounded like what you did, and I talk about this a lot, is a pattern disruption. You know, like there was a lot of blows that just, it was like, you know, from one thing to another, it's like, how much more can you take? And, you know, again, people have a choice in what to do with that. You can stay victim or in the scarcity mode, or you, you, you fight it by creating a different reality and by doing a pattern disruption, like getting rid of something that's not serving you, like the marriage, you know, doing the yoga that's better for your body, you know, all those things that you did. And I think that really helps you know, just give people hope because it is hard to motivate, but you got to create your own reality and do something different so that you, you have that motivation to move on and move. Well, and and I also think that, you know, anybody who's listening to this, Kim, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this to you, ladies and gentlemen, if there's any gentlemen that are listening. Oh yeah. There's guys listening. If you're listening to this, leverage the power of my story to motivate you so that you listen to the whisper and don't have to have the Mack truck because it becomes much easier if you are, it's creating conscious change, which is what I specialize in, uh, you know, specific to creating a wealthy life. Mm -hmm. It's so much simpler and easier and less, um, uh, less explosive and less there's less collateral damage if you take an active role in deciding you know step, step two of my wealthy life method is evaluate what you really want right mm, what nice. is it that you really really want and then take any step towards the creation of that and you are ahead of the the pressures that will ultimately force you to make the change if you don't take some kind of action. Yeah, that's great. And it's like, then you become more the protagonist in your story. Yeah. And the truth right? is, Kim, when I, um, I, when I was going into the decision-making process about the divorce, yeah, I was, I, I connected, reconnected with somebody who I hadn't seen for 20 years uh, who had been my friend in first grade. 
And I, I connected with her. I went to her house. I showed her some pictures and I was telling her what was going on. And she looked at me and she, and I was at the time 38 years old. And she said to me, well, what is it that you want? And mm-hmm. truthfully, that was the first time anyone had ever even asked me that question. And mm-hmm. it was the first time in my life that I actually had any kind of awareness that I could have wants of my own. So there was di- divine intervention that happened in my life in a number of ways. And to be asked, what is it that you want? I mean, I'd just like to let that drop on the audience for a second. Well, you know, I'm just getting chills right now because I literally just got off the phone with somebody who was ta- I was just talking about because I ask that question a lot when I hop on a call with them just to figure out what it is that they want in terms of their love life. And I can't tell you how many times, I'd say eight out of 10, eight out of 10 times, people can't even answer that question. And the other day I was talking to a woman and she was answering the question in ways of what the guys wanted for her. Mm -hmm. And she was also answering in ways of the fear of guys rejecting her. I said, what if you flip that around and said, who is it that's right for you? And what is it that you want? And she, it was like foreign to her. She had no idea like what that is. And you're so right. Like you can't move on or or create that like wealthy mindset unless you're very clear on what it is you want. So you said that's the second step, the evaluate what you want. Mm -hmm. And And then what? And that alone, that alone is a huge gift. Oh my God. Huge. Like like, we could just just spend, spend time just thinking about number one, giving yourself permission to have wants. Like for me, yeah. to have wants was just such a foreign idea, like you were just saying about um, the person you were talking about. So the third step in the wealthy life method is to align your compass to your most efficient course. So this means dialing in on what you want and then getting support either outside support or doing Mm. your own work to say, hmm, what would it take for me to head in the direction of what I want? And, And you don't have to immediately get to what you want, but you've got to align your compass to what it is that you want and start moving in that direction and course correcting along the way. So this piece about Hmm. aligning the compass is something that happens. It just keeps happening. You have to keep aligning, 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 aligning the compass. And the, the compass is love. The compass is love. Hmm. It's do I love myself enough to give myself what I want? Do I love what I want enough to keep moving forward towards it, regardless of what uh, uh, obstacles show up? The compass is love. That's that's huge. I hope everyone just wrote that down because I think people think that the love compass is outside themselves. And so they'll let the compass dictate where they're going. (laughs) You know what I mean by that? But but what you're saying is the compass is is really the self-love and that you get to like kind of move and choose your path, you know, accordingly in the way that you love yourself, which is- And you have to keep asking. Yeah. So so aligning your compass is actually the third step in my system, but it has its own little subsystem in it. Uh Uh-huh spells align. And I'll give that to you quickly. Number one is ask questions. Number two is let love lead. Number three is take inspired action only. Number four is get grounded to grow. And number five is take your next visible steps to ignite or maintain momentum. So when we align our compass, there's actual activity that's going on there. And asking those questions about what do I love? The reason why aligning your compass is an ongoing part of the wealthy life method is because sometimes you come to a point on your journey that you've aligned your compass. Let's say you've aligned your compass towards uh, having the love of your life. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like this woman you were talking about earlier, you manifest the love of your life. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Now, where is love leading you next? 
So you've mm-hmm. always got to be in that sense of wonder and asking the question of where is my love compass leading me now? You know, is the man of your dreams and you now all of a sudden, because you found each other and, and it's one plus one equals 11, is it now time for you to create a world forest tour to raise awareness of the decimation of the rainforests together and is that where love is you know what I mean like (laughs) right right it's it's a it's an ongoing process it's not static so that's something that's really important that's awesome it's like you're so speaking my language it's crazy and and but you're you're the way that you're saying it is beautiful there uh, it was so funny because this woman the other day she called me and she's like find me my soulmate that's how she said that's how she started I'm like, well, I am happy to. However, there may be some like work in between. I'm just like warning you. <laughs> I like, you know, there may just a little bit of homework, a little bit of thing. And what was so cute about this story is actually I did help her find her soulmate. But that's not by the end of our coaching together what she was so happy about. She said, Kim, for the first time in my life. You know, it's great that I have this guy in my life and he treats me like gold and it's just amazing. She said, but for the first time in my life, I love me. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, really? How did you get there? She's like, well, I guess you were kind of like making me do that work, huh? And I said, yeah. And he's, she's like, this never was about the man, was it? I said, nope. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) To your point. That's exactly. Yeah. So I love that. It's never about what you think it's about. And Mm -hmm. it's always, uh, you know, what you think it's like, Uh, one of my mentors calls it decorating the door. Like you decorate the door with what people think that they want. But then when they come, when anybody comes in and invests at a high level for creating a conscious change in their life, um, you know, we go to to step four in the wealthy life mentor. Um, The wealthy life method is let go and leverage to lead. Right. Oh, nice. We've got to let go of a lot of things, including maybe the vision that we had coming into doing the work. So, you know, sometimes you come in to do work with somebody and you invest highly and and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to, I'll just use an example. I'm going to create, you know, a a seven figure business. I'm going to create a seven Mm -hmm. figure business with my message Mm -hmm. and you get in And you discover as you're taking these steps and you're continuing to align your compass along the path, you discover that, you know, a half a million dollars a year is just fine. Thank you very much. (laughs) And, and, um, you know, you discover that you actually want more time to yourself so that you can make art. Mm. Right. So until we start taking the steps on the journey we only have what we think we want that begins the process. It's the initiatory piece of the process. Just like a, a, a caterpillar has no idea when all of a sudden it goes from inching along on the ground to all of a sudden having this overwhelming calling and urge to make its way up to the top of a tree branch somewhere and attach itself to a leaf and expose its belly for the birds to come along and then (laughs) close itself in a cocoon and turn itself to mush it has no idea it's going to become something that's beautiful and has bright iridescent blue wings to fly i love your metaphors it's like i I, like i I, you you paint such a picture where you can just visualize it and feel it and i think that's so powerful you know what i think also what you're saying, I think helps people also alleviate their anxiety and the overwhelm. Because when you think of things so esoteric and so big and that you get ahead of it and you have all these like expectations around it, that's when people get really, really like, you know, disheartened, they give up, you know, and despondent. You said the magic word, word, disheartened. Yeah. Then if you are disheartened, you have lost your compass. You've lost your compass. We got to go back to the compass again. You've lost your compass. Love is no longer leading you. Fear is leading you if you're just yeah. yeah. And so then the work means sometimes, sometimes we take three steps forward and seven steps back. 
Mm -hmm. Right. And And that's okay. It's totally okay. okay Because so I like to use another metaphor. Um, I have, I have had a very bad relationship with stopping. (laughs) I had a very bad relationship with the no and the stop sign. But imagine this, that you're driving down the road at, you know, I don't know, whatever, 30 miles an hour, Mm -hmm. and you come to a stop sign. And instead of instead of stopping, you blow right through it and you keep on going down the road and then you get 3000 miles down the road and you suddenly are out of fuel, you're disheartened, you're discouraged, you're just completely a wreck and you get clued in that, oh, I was supposed to take a left at that stop sign back there. Mm -hmm. to To get to where I really was divinely ordained to go. Yeah. So this idea of um, making forward motion and then take step five in the wealthy life method. You're so good. I love how you do that. Take measurements and tell yourself the truth. So Mm -hmm. tell yourself the truth is the most important piece of this. Take measurements, you know, can be applied towards business things or if you have a, you know, health goal or, you know, a, a love goal or whatever. I, I think with love and with, um, especially with love, it's less about measuring in a, in a number sense of the, the way of measuring, but mm-hmm. the telling yourself the truth is really being present to is love leading today is love leading today is love leading today. And mm. I remember when I first was going through my divorce from my first husband, and I actually have two husbands, husbands. Oh, that's they, was, they was my husband. Uh Um, when I was going through that divorce and I had started the yoga path, what, what enticed me was the yoga teacher. I walked in the door and she was peaceful Mm -hmm. and I just had no experience of that in my life, but I could, I could feel it to my bones. Like, oh my God, this woman emanates peace. And I, what I decided in that moment was I wanted that that's what I wanted. Uh. I wanted peace. And what I did when I said I wanted peace was I gave myself a compass that allowed me to tell myself the truth every single day, every single action, every single engagement with other people, every single um, thing that I did or experience that I experienced, I had the compass to say, is this taking me closer to peace or further away from it. Then it becomes very simple. Wow. This taking, and in in our case, we're using love as the, as the compass. Yeah. This taking me closer to love or further away from it. And love doesn't feel like crap. Let me be clear with everyone. (laughs) Breaking news. <laughs> so you got to tell yourself the truth. Is this yeah. making me feel like crap or do I feel awesome? Do I feel alive? Do I feel healthy? Do I feel vital? Do I feel excited? Do I feel in love? Mhm. Yeah. That's so beautiful. That that wealthy life method is gold. I hope everyone wrote that down because it, it was it's such a tangible way of breaking it down. I wonder, because this is something that I, I hear a lot of people struggle with, is that even if they have steps and tools, there's this piece where they still don't feel like they deserve it. And I wonder if you have any tips around like little hacks or whatnot and how people can get around that mentality because I think that also keeps people in that victim mode. Yeah. So that goes right into step six of the wealthy life method. <laughs> <laughs> see, we didn't rehearse this. You see how we do this? We're dancing. So good. So I good. Know. So here's, this is a really important step. You've got to have clear containers and set boundaries. Okay. So have Mm -hmm. clear containers is another word, another way of saying set boundaries and then be conscious. So when people get into the mindset of, I don't deserve the key here, the little hack here is have containers around aspects of your life. So the wealthy life is more than just money. It actually is uh, the sum total of all the resources you have available to you, time, your health, your ideas that you get, 
energy exchange, which is the money part, and fun with family, friends, and fellows. So, mm. so the wealthy life is the sum total of all of those things. So we have five containers here. So when you have a clear container, you can be more conscious about assessing and telling yourself the truth, going back to step five, telling mm-hmm. yourself the truth about each container. So if you have plenty of time and you feel wealthy with time, but your money situation is not so hot and you're discouraged there, mm-hmm. celebrate that you have plenty of time and borrow from that celebration as a hack to motivate you out of the discouragement and to get you back aligned with your compass of love again. Mm, it's a good reframe, the way that you're saying that. Yeah, that is because yeah. you can't possibly be discouraged in every single area of your life unless you have like really severe depression or some other mental health issue, in which case right. you need to go have, you need to get help, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and as mentors, we can help people through rites of passage in their life and dismantle things that aren't functioning, but I am by no means a mental health professional. So I'm not going to say that this is true of everyone, but I will say that it is true of most of the people who are listening to this show for sure. You, when you contain and, and kind of divide your overall life in a unified way. Uh, and then you can say, oh, I'm discouraged over here, but things are going pretty good over here. Can I borrow from the bank of pretty good over here and yeah. loan, it, loan it to the little discouragement bank? Yeah. And that builds wealth. Totally. I can see that. Yeah. Totally. totally. So good. Is there another step or is that? Yes. The final okay. step is <laughs> yielding, yielding results that allow for plenty of overflow in every area. Because when you have a wealthy life, you have more than enough every day, all the time in all of these areas. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then you've really, really done it. You've really crafted, you've consciously created the change mm-hmm. to, to design a wealthy life. For and so you have things like in reserves so that you can always totally. from. You've always got overflow. There's always overflow. It's like a bubbling fountain or a well. Wealth and well both come from the same word. So if a woman has a string of bad dates and it's been a long time Mm -hmm. that she hasn't had a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Someone who has the reserve and, and what, like, what would that look like? Well, let let me give you an example. Let me Mm -hmm. give you an example. Let's say there's a woman who hasn't had a lot of dates in a long time, but she's massively creative, right? Mm -hmm. She's massively, I'll use myself as an example. I am massively creative. I can, create stuff out of nothing on a, on a dime. Right. Yeah. And so I can, I can spend my time making art or I can spend my time writing poetry or I can spend my time making up the wealthy life method, or I can spend mm-hmm. my time on podcasts <laughs> or I can spend like, I can, I can channel my creativity in a vast number of areas. Well, if I'm having man like date issues, let me borrow from my creativity and apply it towards, this is the fun, this is the fun segment, you know, fun with family, friends, and fellows, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me leverage my creative capacity and start to, again, go in wonder. Like, I wonder if there's another way that I'm not seeing that I could, you know, so many of us get stuck in what the mainstream is doing. Like, really? Yeah. Do I want to like be swiping left for 20 hours I was hours just going to say, that's let not, me just- That's not the total. best use of my time and my creativity. No way. I was just going to say, like, let's make this really simple for everyone. And yeah. if, if you're not getting a bunch of dates by swiping on Bumble over and over and over again, and you're a creative person, no wonder- it's yeah. like banging your head against the wall. Maybe go take an art class or an improv class and meet people that way because that's in your wheelhouse. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Love borrow it. against one of the other areas of your life where you are overflowing already and you have reserves and, and use that um, power to pump up the area of your life where you're having a challenge. And if it's the, the love challenge, I mean, I'm going to tell everyone 
to, to take four, you know, three steps back to align your compass again and, and align your compass to what do you love? What do you love? Yeah. What do you love? If you love kayaking and you're spending a sunny Sunday afternoon with your hand on the stupid phone, swiping left, then mm-hmm. you have to make the conscious choice to put the phone down and go kayaking because yeah. here's what happens real love and real magic comes from out of the blue and it's synchronistic and it's delightful and it's filled with wonder and joy and it happens when you least expect it but you've got to as my my first medicine teacher my shamanic medicine teacher taught me Mm -hmm. you have to make yourself available to spirit bingo yep Yes, you do. As I say in the flirting world, you got to turn your cab light on for anyone to see it. <laughs> it's so true. And I mean, Emerald, you are a wickedly smart woman. You know that? Yeah, <laughs> just to you. plug your podcast even more. Yeah. Um, do you want to just share just where everyone can find you besides all the stuff we talked about? Just recently? Yeah, I yeah. actually have a fun, I, I decided to do something really fun when I created the Wealthy Life Method and took all of my years of experience experience. And I said, what can I do that's really fun? That's something that people can do really quickly. Um, So I made a quiz and you can find it at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. Quiz.wealthylifementor.com. And uh, take the quiz and get your wealth readiness score, remembering that a wealthy life is more than just the money. I love that. And what's your website? My website, you can find me at um, creativeageleader.com, creativeageleader.com. Oh my gosh, Emerald, I so love this. Like it was just, the the word that comes to me to describe this interview was just it's beautiful. Like Aww. the way you, yeah, it, I just felt like it was a piece of art and the exactly. way that you, you painted it and it, you're so on brand thank you. <laughs> and on point. So thank thank you. You. Well, my, that's my tagline for the wealthy life me- mentor is create your life like a work of art. That's, there, that's oh, and so I life. kind of forgot that, or I didn't know that. I just like yeah. you, you speak, you know, who you are. So it, it was just awesome. So well, I'm so grateful that you had me, Kimberly. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm and for your deep desire to serve all the people out there who are looking for love. So thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kim Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, of course, go to my site, seltzerstyle.com. And if you want to learn how to create wealth in your love life, given what we were talking about, then hop on a free breakthrough call with me by signing up through my link in my show description and definitely get in touch with Emerald. She is a wise lady and, and one of us will help you map out a plan for sure. And stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day.